if you are a higher tier science student, you need to know about momentum. Now, momentum is given by an equation, um, which is that mass times by velocity equals momentum. Now, for mass, the units are kilograms. Velocity is meters per second. You can work out the units for momentum by multiplying those together, which gives you kgm slash s or kilogram meters per second. Now, momentum is always conserved, just like energy. So what that means is um, that the momentum before an event or a collision is equal to the momentum after um, an event or a collision or something happening. Okay, now this only applies in a closed system, meaning there are no external forces acting like friction or air resistance or something like that. Now, um, you could be asked to use this to explain a couple of different situations. So let's have a look at what you could be asked about. The first one um, is if you have a object which is initially stationary um, and then has two uh, things moving opposite directions. So the example is a skateboarder. Um, so let's say the skateboarder falls over. Uh, the skateboard goes to the right. The skateboarder, the person on it, will go to the left. And they might say use conservation of momentum to explain this. So what we'd, just, we'd say is that initially, and the question will tell you this, um, the person is stationary. So there is no velocity. So the momentum before the collision is zero. Now, knowing this, conservation of momentum says that momentum after the collision has to also be zero. So how does that work? Because we know that there's a velocity because the person is moving and the skateboarder is moving. How on earth can the momentum be zero? Let me explain. So let's say the momentum going right is in the positive direction. The momentum going left, because momentum is a vector, is in the negative direction. So a vector means it has a direction. We indicate that by having a positive and negative. So left and right will basically cancel out. So what we'd say is that after we've stated conservation of momentum, we'd say the momentum to the right must be um, balanced or must uh, mean there is a momentum, an equal momentum uh, to the left. Now, you don't often have to say positive and negative. Uh, you can do, uh, make sure you talk about direction. Um, but that's a good way of kind of visualizing what's happening. Because if you added a positive plus the negative of the equal value, then you equal zero, which is what it was before. Let's look at another situation. Um, this time we're going to talk about uh, cars or trucks uh, moving along a smooth road. So I've got an initial um, truck or car moving um, towards another one. Uh, the dotted line indicates before and after. So afterwards, um, the two trucks are now kind of stuck or joined together and they move off in a certain direction. So before, um, the red truck has a velocity and the purple truck doesn't. And afterwards, they're stuck together and they move off in the same direction. So in a question like this, they'd ask you something like, explain why the velocity of the red truck before is uh, higher than the velocity afterwards, i.e. why does it slow down? So what you'd say is what I've already written out already, which is about the conservation of momentum, get a mark for that usually anyway, and then you try and apply it. And you'd say, well, I know that afterwards, the mass of the two trucks stuck together is higher. So for it to be higher for the same momentum, the velocity must go down just like how that equation works. One thing goes up, the other thing goes down. That's everything you could be asked for for combined science. So you can stop this video now um, if you're a combined science student. If you're a separate science student, keep watching because you get the joy of doing momentum calculations. So let's have a look at a few different examples of what you could do. Now I'm gonna post some uh, actual exam questions of these um, shortly, um, but let's have a look at different examples and how you'd go about doing them um, before this, without the specific numbers. So let's treat situation one, same as we looked at already. This is an object which has no initial momentum um, and has two objects going opposite directions. The example I'm using here, there was a gun recoiling. So the bullet would have positive momentum. That should say M times V. Um, sorry about that. Um, and the gun will go in the opposite direction with a negative momentum. Now we know, same as before, the momentum before has to be zero because it's not moving. So afterwards, it has to be zero as well. So what we'd then do is we would, and in a question, they give you the numbers. They'd give you the values for the bullet or the gun, and they might ask you to work out the velocity of one of them. So let's say they ask you to work out the velocity of the gun, um, and they give the other three values. You plug them into that little equation there, um, and then you kind of have to put one on the side of the zero and work out V. 
Situation two, just like we looked at with the trucks colliding and sticking together, um, let me show you how we'd work something like that out. So you work out the momentum before and the momentum afterwards, and they might ask you, for example, what velocity do the two trucks move off with if they're now stuck together? So in this question, they give you the two masses usually. Well, they might ask you for one of the masses, but um, a little bit more unusual, and you'd work out the initial momentum. Now we know the initial momentum before the, uh, they collide is equal to the final momentum. The final momentum here, because they're stuck together, you have to add the masses together and treat them as one object. So it'll be m1 plus m2, the two trucks added together, times by their joint velocity, which you might be asked to find. Now, situation three and four are um, a little bit different. Um, so uh, I've seen a question like this before where you have two uh, objects, could be balls, could be dodgems, could be people, whatever. And it's, the question will say something like um, they travel towards each other and they collide and then they stop. And it says explain why they stop or show um, use conservation of momentum uh, to show why their velocity is zero, why they stop. So what you do in this case, um, now because they're traveling in opposite directions, we have to be careful with our positive and negative signs. So they would give you their masses and their velocities, or maybe ask you to work out one, I don't know. And when they stop, we should know the velocity is zero, or the momentum is zero. So that means the momentum at the start has to be zero as well. It's kind of the opposite of our explosion. So what we'd do is we'd uh, do the mass times the velocity of the first ball, um, added to the negative momentum of the second ball, because it's traveling in the opposite opposite direction and prove that equals zero you can plug your numbers in or if you're asked to work something out um, you could work it out that way as well now situation four is probably the trickiest of all of them all and that's if um, an example two people let's say they come together so you've got to work out positive and negative mentor and then they don't stick together or don't stop and they kind of rebound so they both got their own velocity afterwards now a situation situation like that there's lots of variations uh, you could be asked about um, you've just got to use an equation like this momentum of object one plus two before equals momentum of object one plus two afterwards and then write down all the things you know and then try and figure out what you don't know and kind of follow through the algebra till the end. Now, this thing comes up a lot, what we're going to talk about next. So don't be fooled by the fact it's a small section. Uh, we're going to talk about forces and safety. Now, the last equation to do with momentum is equal is uh, momentum, sorry, big pardon, force equals change momentum divided by change in time, or delta mv momentum divided by delta t. Now, what that means is, and it can be used in a few different situations, uh, like airbags and crumple zones, crash barriers, um, I don't know, squishy floors, like anything at all, really, soft surfaces, um, can be used to explain why someone or something doesn't have an injury or high chance of injury. How can you reduce it? Now, to reduce the chance of injury, you always want to talk about reducing the force. So how do we reduce the force? Now, using this equation, we can increase the time taken because they're inversely proportional. You increase the time taken for the impact to occur then you reduce the force. This question is normally three marks though, so you'd have to say an additional thing, which is to reduce the whole, this whole section of this formula, it's called the rate of change of momentum. Okay, so you say reduce the rate of change of momentum. Alternatively, and um, this is kind of a version of Newton's second law, F equals MA, you could also say reduce the acceleration, which would be absolutely fine for this question as well.